this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Give God a hand. I like God's word. <laughs> you know, God never speaks unless he speaks through a prophet or something that he will use. And if a prophet is too foolish, he won't use a donkey, but he will use something that he has created to speak through. Give God a hand. What will you say if you're foolish and your dog speak to you, huh? The prophet was so foolish, his donkey had to rebuke him. Balaam was a prophet, but now he was becoming a false prophet by cursing the blessed nation, Israel, of God. The donkey had to stop. He did it for money. Today, I, I tell you, I don't preach to you a sermon today. I said, okay, I speak to you. I teach you and I speak to you. I don't preach sermon. Today in the church, many people try to deceive you with money. There's a lot of money preachers. And because of the lack of finances in our country and in other countries like Zimbabwe, people flood to money preachers. They deceive you. If you give this seed tomorrow, this is going to happen. If you sow that seed, this, don't talk nonsense. Jesus never told to sow, to anyone to sow some money as seed. Did he say something like that? He clearly states you need to give your tithe and your offering. That's what the Bible says. And there is a seed of faith to be sown, but don't be manipulated by money preachers. God has never called his preachers to preach money, but to preach salvation that is in Jesus. Give God a hand. What I say is, I speak about money as well, because it's a very important principle. But God did not call preachers to preach money. He called them to preach Jesus he called them to preach Jesus as a savior. That's what he said. Give God a hand. And today they say many people, their aim is to preach about money, knowing that the people are in great financial need. They lure them with money promises. If they do this, great money is going to come, etc., etc. And they cause people to run after God for money. They are deceivers. The Bible says the gospel, the preaching of the gospel is not a means to financial gain. Now I can tell you a couple of things about money. Money is the answer to everything, meaning the test for every human heart. If your money does not belong to God, you don't belong to God. You cannot serve God and mammon. What is mammon? Mammon is not money. Mammon is the love and security that people put in money. That's a demon, not the money. Money is not evil. People say, they abuse the scripture, and they say, um, money is the root of all evil. That is absolutely a lie. It says that the love of money is the root of many evils. When is money your love? When you put your security in the money, and it can clearly be seen when you don't open your hand to give. That means you want to hold on to that money because you put your security in the money and you do not trust the Lord for tomorrow. So you say, what about tomorrow? Let me pocket this. Let me stash it tomorrow. What will happen tomorrow? Maybe he doesn't provide for me tomorrow. The one reason why God gives you money, the greatest reason, is to let it flow through you, never to stash it up. If you stash up money, you are serving mammon. When you put your security in money, you are bowing your knee to the God called mammon. The reason, the only reason why God made people rich is to make sure that the gospel is spread to the ends of the earth and to be a blessing to those who are in need. And they themselves will greatly benefit by it. They don't have to worry if they're going to be benefited. But let me not preach to you money. Let me preach Christ to you. But Christ was standing where the widow was putting in her very last. This woman was free from the power of money. 
She placed him a last under all. Give Jesus a hand. That was a very little, uh, small amount of money. But she placed him her last and her all. Who knows what God had offered that for her? Because the master was looking on and looking what the people had put in. You say it's a personal thing when you give. When you give again, I'm going to stand at the, at the basket. I'm going to see what you put in there. That's what Jesus did. He looked at what the people put in. Now, I don't look at the amount that people put in. Jesus looked at their hearts. That widow have placed in the, in the basket her all and her last. Do you think God left her like that? I tell you, God blessed her afterwards. I tell you that. Give God a hand. If you've got a religious mind, you'll think, oh, after that, ah, she went down the drain. Shame, shame. Poor widow. I think it was the end. It was not the end. It was the beginning of her life. Let me tell you that today. A prophetic, I tell you, it was the beginning of her life. She was a young widow to begin with. She gave her last. She gave her all. I tell you today, in a, in a, it's not written in the Bible, I tell you prophetically, that was the beginning of the next phase in her life. A very successful woman. Give God a hand. Anyone that holds on to what is dear to him, he will lose it. But he who loses what is dear to him, he will gain real blessing and real life. Hallelujah. Amen.